Today I'm going to show you a quick and easy build of a magic eye tube tester. He uses readily available off the shelf parts, no circuit board building, just a little bit of soldering point to point. Very easy build, very inexpensive, under $20. So let's go see what we have. Today we're going to be looking at a Magic Eye tube tester that I threw together in fairly short order. It is oftentimes used for signal strength and other metering devices where visual feedback, old radios, and other test equipment, as the signal is varied, the opening, which can be just a simple wedge, can be dual wedges, or can be four wedges, it will open and close depending on the application. There are also linear magic eye tubes which usually have a smaller base to them. And you can see there is a second socket that is utilized for six pin magic eye tubes. The six pins are usually 6.3 volts so I'm going to turn this off and change out the tubes and show you what that does. Six pin tubes have a little arrow usually between pin one and six. I've put pin one and six at the bottom here. So I'll plug that in, power it up, and it'll take a few moments for this to warm up. A lot of the old tubes though, the phosphors are very weak and we may or may not be able to see it's there but it's very very weak I don't have to run this one in a dark room for you to be able to see that on this one here the wedge is on the left hand side unfortunately I'm getting too much glare to even see that so we'll turn the unit around and see what's inside. First I have to apologize, it's a little bit of a rat's nest, but it's mostly just point to point wiring inside. Again this is the octal socket and this is the six pin socket. I had an old wall wart power supply laying around. This is an AC so I put a little bridge rectifier and capacitor. I mounted two switcher regulators. One is put at 12.6 volts and one is at 6.3 volts. That's for the two different heaters. I also employed a switcher that will take you the whole way up to 380 volts if you need it, but I've set it at 200 volts for this system. Has a little trimmer, you can adjust your output voltage on that. So, on this one, I rectify the AC, uh, it gives me about 18 to 20 volts. You can also use an old computer power supply that runs maybe. 19 volts DC. The high voltage switcher doesn't like anything more than about 18 volts and then it doesn't regulate well for me. So I've taken the 12.6 volt supply and supply the switcher with that. So when they're powered up we get indicators showing that each of the low voltage switchers is running and the high voltage is running. 
you can put your meters on them and adjust them to your heart's desire. These two switchers here, I just use double sided tape to mount them on this piece of perf board and then I just continue the grounds and the input B pluses into those. The 12.6 volt, these are DC, 12.6 volt goes to the pot which I use to adjust the I use to adjust the opening of the eye tube. So I'm going to mount those in there, all three of these with double sided tape. So there I've mounted the boards on the inside of the box with double sided tape. It's a foam tape, just comes in little squares. Works really well and they're not going anywhere. So let's discuss the circuit. So the input can be AC DC anywhere from 18 to 20 volts DC 12 to 18 volts AC full wave rectifier capacitor doesn't have to be really big because these are switchers so they'll compensate so I have the one low voltage switcher here and the other low voltage switcher here these are cheaper than what you could buy the individual components to make your own on eBay you can get 10 of them for about a dollar 30 cents a piece and since I had a use for a number of these in another project I got 10 of them the high voltage switcher It's a little more expensive. Spent a whole six dollars on a high voltage switcher, and it says it'll produce up to 380 volts DC. Uh, I'm not going that high with this. It uses the MC34063 IC. It's minimal dr current draw. So, this is more than adequate. So, to simplify the drawing, TA is the target and P is the plate of the triode section. The target is the part that actually lights up. You just need a 1 meg resistor between the two. between the grid and ground I put a 330k again the value is not critical the heater 2 connection is also at ground potential so I can use either 6 volt or 12 volt tubes I put a switch and that goes to the heater 1 connection So you get 12.6 volt filament or 6.3 volt filament. Tubes are rated AC or DC and wiring is not a critical thing. It's not, you're not carrying signals. The other thing that makes this simplified is for the cathode, I take the 12 volts DC and rather than adjusting the grid, I adjust the cathode from 0 volts to 12 volt DC. This in effect is the same as changing the grid on the triode section. So we have 
H1 is heater, H2 is heater, G is control grid, K is the cathode, P is the plate, and TA is the target of the tube. It doesn't get much simpler than that. I hate making circuit boards, especially when you can buy a switcher for the price of a buck thirty. Don't have to buy an expensive transformer. All of us have wall warts and old laptop supplies that we can scrounge. Uh, so it's minimal cost, um, minimal construction. You can make this thing probably in an hour or two. The biggest thing is drilling the holes in the box. And probably the most expensive thing is the box itself. Here's an old ICO resistance capacitance comparator bridge. It uses, which is a very bright magic eye tube. And you put in your capacitor and you turn the dial and the dial is to the maximum opening that's the value of your capacitor read on the screen. So there you have it. A magic eye tube tester. We'll do the old six pin as well as the newer octal. Newer being relative. So there you have it. A magic eye tube tester. The information here will be on my Patreon site. So go to patreon.com slash jamzoni. Information is in the links down below. There will be a copy of the circuit diagram and links back to this video.